Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we're still waiting just for a couple of uh, people to join in, so we'll be with you shortly. Thank you. Thank you for joining our session today. We hope you're going to enjoy this. Though it's not safe to travel at this time, it does not hurt to dream and plan for the future. Presentation will be about 30 minutes in length, and we do have a handout along the side that you can download with some TAA benefits available to you uh, Atlantic Tours. You're gonna be muted throughout the presentation to reduce any noise or feedback. You can ask questions alongside the panel or along the top. Uh, we will answer them at the end of the presentation. If we don't get to your question, we will respond to you afterwards via email. Uh, suggest that you watch it in full screen mode to get the full value of the presentation. Um, some of the recordings on the videos might be a little bit low, so you might have to adjust your volume on that. Good morning, my name is Barb. I'm the CA Atlantic Bears, Law, Bears Life Office. I've been in travel for about 30 years now, and I was fortunate enough to experience Atlantic Tours Wine Tour this, to the valley this past September. It's a great experience as you'll learn from much later on in this presentation. And now over to you, Leslie. Well, thank you, Barb. I'm Leslie. I'm the group's coordinator um, for CA Atlantic. I've been in the travel industry for 20 years. I had my first experience with Atlantic Tours back in September, and I must say I was very impressed. Oh, that's a picture of Barb and I on the, on the Atlantic Tours bus. The safety protocols they had in place and the knowledge of their tour director and the itinerary we did for the day trip seemed like a vacation without traveling far from home. We visited Planters Ridge Winery, then on to the Blomidon Lookoff, and the scenery was stunning. We visited and had lunch at the Lobster Pound in Halls Harbor, and one last stop at the beautiful Grand Prix Winery where we enjoyed another tasting and tour before returning to Halifax and saying goodbye to the new friends we met. What a wonderful day we had, and even though we cannot travel um, to our faraway bucket list destinations at this time, day trips like this one definitely make up for it. I can't wait to do more trips like this in the coming months. Now I will pass the presentation along to our friend, CAA partner, and director of fun, Richard from Atlantic Tours. Well, thank you, Leslie and Barb. Uh, I'm thrilled to be here today. Uh, I'm Richard Arnold, uh, Director of Fun of Atlantic Tours, also president, but I much prefer the Director of Fun title. The, um, uh, I'm re re really excited this year to be um, partners of, uh, preferred partners of CAA. And, uh, you know, we, um, you know, are proud to be local. Uh, normally, uh, uh, during this time of the year, I'd be traveling the world to bring the world to see Atlantic Canada. And Atlantic Tours has been in business for over 50 years, and we also take Atlantic Canadians to see the world. So uh, with that in mind, I mean, we're known for our guaranteed departure trips that cover all of Atlantic Canada throughout May to October. Uh, we also are the customization experts. We do a lot of customized programs. And everything you're going to uh, see today um, is basically part of one of our group tours or one of our self drives. But if there's something that you would like to explore that I'm not going to showcase, you just need to reach out to your favorite uh, CAA agent and they will work with us to totally customize exactly what you're looking for. So, you know, keep that in mind as we go through our, I'm going to call it our speed dating process. 
because I'm going to cover four provinces, all of Atlantic Canada, in the next uh, 25 minutes or so. So please uh, ask any questions that you may, type that in the box, and we'll um, get started uh, with um, some, some great options to explore here in Atlantic Canada. So uh, with that said, uh, let's uh, get started here. And we'll see if we can get the, the uh, PowerPoint rolling. Once again, uh, there's my credentials and like I said, experts in the four Atlantic provinces. And we're going to start our first slide off with uh, Halifax. I mean, Halifax being the capital city of Nova Scotia and uh, the main hub for getting here if you're from outside of the region. There's so much to do in Halifax, even for a short getaway. You have the beautiful Maritime Museum of the Atlantic, you have Pier 21, you have the Discovery Center, you have the Art Gallery of Nova Scotia, you have the Museum of Natural History, all located right in the downtown core where you can park, stay, and uh, not even leave your spot. Another great uh, getaway uh, is Peggy's Cove, uh, about a 45-minute drive from Halifax. Great spot to go to have breakfast, look out over the beautiful St. Margaret's Bay area, um, and uh, you know, walk through the community, explore uh, the shops, and uh, certainly this is one of the most photographed spots in North America. And then from there, we're going to head down towards the South Shore, is what we call it, uh, truly the Western Shore. But the uh, community of Lunenburg, the very colorful UNESCO World Heritage Community, you can see the beautiful old academy, the churches in the backdrop. You can go to the golf course across the street and take this uh, beautiful picture, or should I say, across the water. There are carriage rides in town, there's the Fisheries Museum of the Atlantic, so much to take in it, the, the Ironworks Distillery. And then there's beautiful Mahone Bay, known for those uh, statuesque uh, uh, churches located in the heart of, of town. And once again, a very walkable town, beautiful shops, uh, Amos Pewter, there's even a hands-on uh, opportunity there to make yourself uh, your own souvenir. Uh, there are um, uh, an endless uh, array of shops. I put the Salty Dog Sea Tours in here at the beautiful Oak Island Resort, which has been totally renovated. Um, they do uh, boat tours. Now, this company, Salty Dog Tours, goes out around Oak Island. The owner of this company is amazing. He has traveled the world as a treasure hunter. He is in the show Curse of Oak Island. You can see how comfortable his pontoon boat is. He goes out around the island, tells the story of the making of the show, and also um, talks about his digs all around the world. He shows you some great souvenirs. If we head further down the coast, uh, you have the communities of uh, Liverpool and Shelburne, and uh, one of the great sites down the Pumnicos is the historic Acadian village, which uh, uh, pays tribute to the Acadian heritage in the early 1900s. It's like walking back in time. And then on to uh, beautiful Yarmouth with the uh, iconic lighthouse at Cape Horseshoe. You can actually visit and explore there. Great vistas of seeing the town. But in the town of Yarmouth, there's great uh, walking tours, there's foodie tours, and uh, accommodations located right in the heart. Once again, you can park, go out and explore uh, the shops and the sites. And, and Cape Horseshoe is a beautiful drive uh, amongst a, a number of islands to get out there. And then we head up the uh, French shore of uh, Nova Scotia. The, the Acadian French shore through the communities of Clare, and then you end up in Church Point with the uh, beautiful St. Mary's Church, uh, one of the largest uh, wooden churches uh, in North America, also a great Acadian museum located there, um, and, and, uh, and, and lots of other uh, beautiful beaches. Uh, those kind of things are all available along that coast. And then off to one of my favorite communities, Digby, the scallop boat, you can walk and talk to the fishermen out on the, on the pier. You can stay at the beautiful Digby Pines Resort overlooking the, the Bay of Bundy Tides. You'll definitely see the transition in the tides. The culinary at the Pines is wonderful. They have a, uh, a great large outdoor pool. They have a wonderful spa, so much to do and see. And then as uh, Leslie said, one of my favorite spots to go is beautiful Halls Harbor. I think it equals the beauty of Peggy's Cove the little uh, harbor itself during low tide, the ships are all laying high and dry in the mud, but during high tide, floating right up next to the dock. And that's a beautiful new uh, reconstruction there, a great bar, great restaurant, and of course, the famous uh, Halls Harbor Lobster Pound. And as Leslie mentioned again, you have the beautiful view, view from the look off from uh, Lomadin, looking towards the communities of Wolfville and Grand Prairie. 
You're seeing the apple orchards, the vineyards, the great farmland, and the Minas Basin and during a low tide once again. That area is totally emptied of water. It is um, one of the most fantastic views and unknown. I mean, for, to a lot of uh, even Nova Scotia, so it was amazing to me how many people from the Halifax area had never been to beautiful Halls Harbor. Now we're over in the Annapolis Valley looking back towards Cape Lomadon and one of the many, many wineries. And we do wine tours throughout um, the summer months uh, down there to explore. We usually include three wineries. Um, a nice lunch, either on your own or included, um, you know, some great storytelling and sightseeing. Once again, this is kind of my childhood view from my mom's house uh, on, the, on the ridge, looking towards Cape Lomond and the Minas Basin. And what you're seeing in the forefront there is uh, Grand Prairie National Historic Site, now a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And you're seeing the church, you're seeing the beautiful dike land. That's why it got its UNESCO designation. Those dikes were built back um, in the 1600s and still functioning perfectly today. Then we're going to head over to the Gloose Cap Trail of Nova Scotia. The Gloose Cap Trail, another amazing site. This is Joggins Fossil uh, Cliffs. Uh, uh, on our tours, we go there, we get out and walk on the beach. You'll pick up and hold in your hand some of the, the fossils. Uh, you'll learn all about them. They do a great job. And, uh, you know, on, on the way there, we often stop at Mass Town Market one of my favorite spots to shop and buy local produce and, and great gifts. We'll also stop at the Five Islands Lighthouse Park. Once again, great views of the Bay of Fundy uh, out towards the Advocate area. And you'll see how close you actually are to the Annapolis Valley when you're in this uh, region. If you could, uh, the old ferry was going from Wolfville, the Kippewa Ferry uh, that went so many uh, years ago uh, between the two communities, once again, wonderful. Now we're gonna head over to the Sunrise Trail on the Northumberland side, looking towards Prince Edward Island, and another great spot, uh, one of the less uh, visited vineyards, because it's not in the Annapolis Valley, is Yost Vineyards. And so on occasion, we do tours up this way. We'll include things, like I said, the uh, Joggins Fossil Cliffs, and we will also include, um, you know, time in Tatamagush, or further along, like you're seeing here with the Hector Heritage, Heritage Key um, in Picto, You'll learn all about the first settlers when they came over in the Hector, and you'll be amazed at what life must have been like tra traveling on that boat you're seeing in the forefront. But an excellent museum, very community oriented. Just across the street is the Roman Knives uh, Factory, one of the best uh, knife makers in the world. And once again, great little shops. Another great stop uh, on the Sunrise Trail is Seafoam Lavender. Um, they um, have beautiful fields of, of lavender. The smell is phenomenal but all their products are handmade from lotions to creams, to just sachets you put in your car or in your drawers, um, but there's nothing more beautiful in the smell of that local lavender. From um, um, that, uh, we're going to also learn about um, sugar maple. There are um, um, places where you can stop and have a, a taste in Sugar Moon Farm is one of our favorite stops. Uh, you can, uh, we can include a nice meal for you. You can do, uh, the maple syrup tasting, uh, once again, a great uh, local stop of the area. And, um, you know, further down the road, there's the community of uh, New Glasgow uh, and, and uh, so much to do in the New Glasgow area. Before we head over to the eastern shore of Nova Scotia with Memory Lane Heritage Village, if you've not been there, it's a great reconstruction of uh, life once again uh, in the early uh, 1900s and from old service stations to old buildings great docents, great storytelling, and other beautiful things along the Eastern Shore to consider are the beautiful beaches. Another fabulous stop, if you want to get away from everything and uh, be less connected, Lizcombe Lodge. Uh, you can see Lizcombe River right on the property, uh, stunning views. Um, the only thing I would say there is the internet's a little bit spotty, but that can be enjoyable to get away from uh, the rest of the world, but a uh, beautiful drive, a beautiful stay. Uh, and uh, you can go kayaking or fishing, so much to choose from. And just down the road from Lisbon Lodge, a uh, great uh, day uh, trip would be historic Sherbrooke Village, where you step back in time once again. Uh, great uh, uh, animators and presenters. Uh, there's restaurants there. There's a wonderful grist mill uh, all along the uh, Lisbon River. And uh, just if you have not ever done this, it's a wonderful stop. Now we're jumping over to uh, Cape Breton Island, 
one of the favorite stops and, and uh, places to work out of is the town of Badak. And in Badak is the Alexander Graham Bell Museum, uh, a first class museum that pays tribute to all of Bell's wonderful inventions. Uh, the, the telephones included, but that was one of his least favorites. So this museum really talks about the early flights with hyperfoil uh, and no trip to Cape Breton would be complete without the world famous Cabot Trail, one of the most uh, scenic highways in the world. Uh, truly phenomenal. Um, I would just did this last October with the group once again, you know, bringing locals that sold out very quickly. We went during fall color time and um, the, the weather was just like this. The views were uh, phenomenal and uh, of course, no trip on the Cabot Trail is complete without, be, without uh, perhaps seeing a moose, which we did. We also did the hike out on the Skyline Trail on some of our trips, not on that one. We always have to factor in the abilities of everyone going, but that's certainly a nice option. It's about a 45 minute walk out and a 45 minute walk uh, back. It doesn't seem like much of an incline uh, going out, but on the way back, you do notice it, but it's a very well-groomed trail. Another great uh, event in Cape Breton in the fall is the Celtic Colors Festival. Of course, we have a tour that includes the Celtic uh, Festival. It's in the fall with the fall colors. So you get the Celtic music, fall colors. We usually um, include a presentation each uh, day, and those presentations of musical events travel through around Cape Breton to the varying communities, and uh, a wonderful, wonderful experience. Another spot that it was amazing to me when we did it last October, how many people from the mainland of Nova Scotia have never been to Fortress Lewisburg or have not been there in a lot of years. Uh, once again, great animators, uh, a wonderful world-class facility in our backyard that we often forget about, but stay in Sydney for a few nights or even from Bedeck, you're only looking at a little over an hour's drive to get there. Now off to beautiful New Brunswick. One of my favorite things to do there is go to Shediac giant lobster sculpture, but they also have lobster tails or Shediac Bay Cruises where you go out on the boat uh, and eat lobster right on the boat. Uh, they uh, serve it Acadian style, which would be cold. Um, a great family runs the business and they have great alternates to uh, lobster if you're not a lobster lover. No experience in New Brunswick would be complete without the Hopewell Cape Rocks, a beautiful Bay of Fundy that separates Nova Scotia from New Brunswick. Uh, an amazing uh, feat. I mean, the amount of water that comes in and out of the bay would fill the Grand Canyon. Um, it was in the running for uh, one of the, the top natural wonders of the world, and we made a 20th spot there. But get out, walk on the ocean floor, and, ex uh, and explore. The Funny Trail Parkway that joins, um, you know, uh, practically St. John, but I should say St. Martin, the community outside of St. John, uh, through to uh, towards Fundy National Park is being um, worked on all the time. Here you're seeing um, uh, basically St. John, New Brunswick. You're looking at reversing falls, the bridge over reversing falls, and looking back towards the downtown core. Another one of my favorite, favorite stops in New Brunswick is the beautiful, picturesque community of St. Andrews. Great walking tours, great museum, vibrant waterfront, some of the best whale watching uh, in Atlantic Canada, uh, the North American white right whale uh, summers here in uh, the Bay of Fundy, so you can go out on the Quadi Lynx uh, boat tour or one of the other many pontoon style boats. Hopefully, see the the North American right whale or some humpbacks. Certainly, lots of seabirds. And uh, you know, you're in Otis St. Andrews. You're mixing in amongst the islands, so you're learning about the whirlpools and the uh, the other. Um, uh, flora and fauna of, of the Bay of Fundy, the, uh, the uh, Huntsman Museum located in St. Andrews pays a uh, complete tribute to uh, the Bay of Fundy and all the life that's supported there. Now off to the village of uh, Pays de la Seguin. Um, that is in, uh, in uh, the Acadian area of, uh, of New Brunswick along, along the Northumberland shore. Uh, this is a storybook um, uh, created village telling the story with animators and singing and uh, it's located in Batouche, New Brunswick. Uh, other great attractions near there are Olivier Sofari, the dunes of Batouche, the Irving Eco Center, lots to do there. Before we head over to beautiful Prince Edward Island you're seeing the Confederation Bridge. It's always a nice way to go and when you arrive on the other side there's beautiful Gateway Village with shops, a great opportunity to take pictures of the bridge. Uh, I always say Abagway was the Mi'kmaq name for uh, uh, Prince Edward Island, 
And I always call it the patchwork quilt province. It looks like a, a kaleidoscope of uh, a color. It looks like a quilt uh, looking from uh, up above down. Charlottetown, great spot for uh, parking yourself for a few nights. Do the Confederations Players walking tour. Learn about uh, uh, how Charlottetown's played such a big role in the creation of Canada. The first meeting was held uh, for, for the making of Canada before the four original provinces of Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, um, and Quebec and Ontario. Green Gables, you have to do that. Anna Green Gables, one of the most famous characters out along Cavendish Beach. Um, there's so much to do and see there from uh, the, uh, the village, the Avalon uh, village, the, uh, uh, the museum itself, um, the uh, National Park. What you're seeing here is Prince Edward Island National Park and some of those beautiful beaches that extend all along the North Shore. And, uh, you know, once again, plant yourself for a few days. There's great museums. Or near here is also the North uh, Rustico Music Festival held at, at every summer. Uh, a great spot for that. And, uh, you know, relax, walk the beaches, take in the sun. Uh, then on the other part of the province, up towards Summerside, um, is you have the Acadian community again in the historic uh, village, Acadian, uh, lots of music, lots of Acadian dishes, uh, food, uh, worth a few days uh, in, in that, that period of the island, staying perhaps in Summerside or even in some of the bed and breakfast uh, in the Acadian communities. Now off to Newfoundland, believe it or not. Uh, we're, um, we have tours that run all season. Uh, I always call it the Alaska of the East. What you're seeing here is Portishwa National Historic Site, which we're jumping up the Northern Peninsula. This is a mu museum that pays tribute to the archaic Indians. Uh, once again, uh, the feel of the Portishwa community very much reminds you of Peggy's Cove, a great lighthouse, that moonscape of, of land and rock. And we're one of the few companies that actually go over to Labrador. And what you're seeing here is a picture of Red Bay, one of the UNESCO World Heritage Sites located in Newfoundland. We have so many in Atlantic Canada, but many of them are here in Newfoundland. But Red Bay uh, was the Basque whaling center when whale oil was king before the oil that we have today. This is where the harvesting of the, the whales took place. It was one of the first industrial sites, another wonderful UNESCO World Heritage Site back on the island of Newfoundland, up in Lancel Meadows of the Great Northern Peninsula, is the museum that pays tribute to the Vikings. Um, and this was the first UNESCO World Heritage Site. Near here is also Norstead, so you could take in both sites. Norstead is a recreation of a Viking uh, settlement. The, uh, the views there are phenomenal. One of the best spots in the world to see icebergs. Uh, this picture is in actually St. Anthony. Uh, once again, about a half hour from Lanzo Meadows. Uh, it is the vibrant northern community where Sir Wilfred Grenville did all of his doctoring in the north. Great museum that pays tribute to that. One of our favorite boat tours is what you're seeing here, Northland Discovery Boat Tours. You always get to taste iceberg ice in your water. Uh, you'll get a great opportunity to do uh, whale watching and, of course, those puffin birds. And then uh, no trip would be complete along the northern peninsula. Um, without seeing some moose as well. So I'd be very surprised that you didn't see moose or caribou along the road. Um, other great uh, um, stops, as I said, the Wealth of Grenville, even the murals at the hospital in St. Anthony are phenomenal. There's the moose I talked about. I always said there's more moose than people on the Northern Peninsula and in the Newfoundland. So uh, very rarely do we not see a moose or even black bear when we're traveling along the road. Um, our tour uh, to Newfoundland uh, covers 13 days in length. We have a wonderful one uh, leaving from uh, Halifax and returning to Halifax rather than the usual flight back. We created that around the, uh, the Atlantic bubble and that will be uh, running in July, hopefully of this year, once the Atlantic bubble opens back up. Um, once again, we always spend some days in a Grossmore National Park in a beautiful community called Cowhead. What you're seeing here is Western Brook Pond Fjord. We're one of the few companies that give you a choice when you're there. You can do the boat tour in Western Brook Pond, which is this iconic shot that's part of all the lore, or we can go over and do the boat tour in Bond Bay. The big difference is Western Brook Pond, you need to be able to walk for 45 minutes to get in and out, whereas Bond Bay, we uh, drop you off at the boat site, you get on the boat, you uh, enjoy 
the beautiful uh, entertainment. You look at Grossmore Mountain, which you're seeing in the background, but more importantly, you look at the Tableland. The Tablelands is why it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It's where you can pick up and hold in your hand a piece of the Earth's mantle. Then we start traveling over towards the east coast of Newfoundland, and this is in the community of Gander, North American Atlantic Aviation Museum. This is a museum that pays tribute to uh, the crossroads of America when Gander was an important uh, hub for transcontinental um, uh, flights. Uh, and this museum uh, is very interesting, a lot about lo local artifacts. And of course, you can't speak about Gander without talking about the musical Come From Away that's been touring the world and, and showcasing us on the international crowd. Twilling Gate, one of my favorite spots, is an oak port in, in Newfoundland, a fishing oak port, um, stunning views, stunning lighthouse, um, great spot once again to view the icebergs along Iceberg Alley. And then we're going to jump down to the Bonavista Peninsula with Cape Bonavista Lighthouse, the beautiful historic uh, communities of Trinity here and Bonavista. We spend a whole day touring the Bonavista Peninsula, um, concluding with some free time in um, in Trinity and uh, and visiting you know, the the uh, Life Museum there with all the old buildings and having dinner before coming to our overnight in Clarenville. We do two nights in. Clarenville area um, and lots of time for um, Terra Nova National Park and as I said all the sites along the way not far from Trinity and when we start heading towards uh, St. John's the capital city there's the community of Brigus some of you may have watched uh, Rock Solid Bills a new a TV show on um, on Home and Garden TV and it uh, showcases Brigus Newfoundland absolutely one of my favorite favorite places to go and as is St. John's, uh, the capital city, you can see the colorful building in the downtown core. You can see the, uh, the, uh, the, the rooms at, at the back, the big building along the skyline. That is their um, art museum. Um, you have the historic waterfront. You have Signal Hill, great trails at Signal Hill, a great spot for a picture stop. Once again, animated at the foot of Signal Hills, another world-class uh, world museum. The Geo Johnson Center. Uh, once again, just absolutely um, stunning. It, it talks about the the um, geology of, uh, of uh, Newfoundland. Uh, great spot to buy souvenirs. No trip would be complete without going out to Cape Spear National Historic Site. This is the most easterly point in North America. This is where the sun comes up first. Um, once again, just the walk the trails, taking the uh, the uh, visions, the views, I should say, and as you look back towards the capital city of St. John, the beautiful entrance to that uh, harbor. Uh, then we go down to Bay Bowls, where we do another boat tour. Um, Gatherall's has the um, Pratamaran style boat, and um, they go take you out around uh, uh, the Bird Islands there, and that's the largest puffin colony, so no shortage of puffins. I always say, if you want the icebergs, you should really go in June, uh, early July. But the last few years, they've even lasted into August. But the puffins, once again, you want to go before September because the puffins are a seabird and um, they live at sea. But in the summer, they come in to nest and have their young. So that's when you get to see the, uh, the, the most of them. And they start going back to sea in late August. But they're in Whitless Bay. Uh, once again, a beautiful, beautiful sight. And that um, um, takes us, uh, like I said, to Newfoundland. Here's some of the tours that we have to offer, uh, starting with a, a, a flight or a, a helicopter ride out to Stable Island. We have the day trips of the Annapolis Valley Wine Tours. We have uh, Skeleton and Picto, uh, you know, Grand Pre. Uh, these are all short trips going throughout the season. And then we have our Nova Scotia tours, the best of Cape Breton Island, the best of Prince Edward Island. But if you um, you know, want to explore these, visit our website, reach out to your CAA, CAA agent. They can get you all the information you need. These are some of the Atlantic Canada tours that we have. And enjoying um, um, normal years, uh, we have our weekly guaranteed departures, but with COVID um, and the world not being able to come, we have designed some dates uh, towards the Atlantic Canada audience that may want to stay here and explore in their own backyard with some of the beautiful sites that I've given you. We also have some tours of Canada that we still have in play. We have the Magdalen Islands, which is you know off of Prince Edward Island, 
and we're hoping that might be part of our bubble as the St. Pierre off of the coast of Newfoundland. So going to France within North America, once again, in their own backyard, a wonderful experience. The Gaspé Peninsula, and I'm hosting a tour myself um, in the Niagara wine country. And what you're seeing here is, um, is uh, the, uh, the motor coach, one of the motor coaches that we have uh, wrapped. Our coach partner is Coach Atlantic. I'm showing you the inside with the partitions. But now I'm going to jump over, and you may want to turn up your volume because this is something I've recorded on my own. And, um, you know, I wanted to show you the inside of the bus and the bus, and it may be a little bit hard to hear me without putting up the volume. So we're going to uh, attempt to play that video now. President and Director of Fun of Atlantic Tours. And we wanted to spend some time today to show you a, a new modern motor coach. Um, we're, we're very proud of this one with the Atlantic Tours name on it. Our partner is Coach Atlantic. And uh, during the pandemic, Coach Atlantic uh, did some protocols on in, inside of their motor coaches to, um, to make things safe. And we're following all public health protocols. And so we wanted to give you a view of what would actually happen. When you arrive, you would be physically distanced, uh, boarding the coach. Your hands would be sanitized before getting on. We would load from the back of the coach first. So those seated at the back would uh, get on first and, uh, and then we would load the rest. And uh, when we uh, actually get off the bus, it would be the opposite. People on the front of the coach would depart first and those at the back. And everyone gets sanitized each time getting on and off the motor coach. And so let's have a look inside. So as you can see in the stairwell, there is a, a handle on both sides, which is cleaned on a regular basis. Nice uh, angled steps, easy access to get on. As you can see, uh, the partitions are around each seat and around the aisle. And uh, as far as uh, the protocols right now for the province is we're allowed 75% capacity as long as we can physical distance. So to start with, the front seats uh, aren't uh, accommodated because the driver has some physical distancing space. And then depending on uh, how you book, if you already have a bubble of three or four people, that means you can sit together. And if you're a single, you would have a seat to yourself and we work on a seating plan that would accommodate uh, getting uh, the appropriate number of people on the motor coach. And as you walk along, you'll see that each of the seats do have the uh, puxy glass around them. Uh, and uh, we just ask everyone to stay in the same seat. We normally, prior to COVID, would do seat rotation. But uh, since COVID, you will be assigned a seat for your entire portion of the trip, no, no, uh, depending on what length that is. It could be a few days or it could be the entire length of the trip. And as you can see, uh, modern motor coaches have nice seat belts and uh, it's recommended uh, that everyone wear the seat belt or we uh, encourage that. Uh, regulations are coming shortly that everyone will be mandated to use them. So we're trying to get everyone used to that. You've also seen some uh, video monitors up overhead. So if we have uh, spare time, uh, we can always uh, show some movies or, or um, give uh, lores of future trips or even do a presentation or a talk on just about anything. And as you continue along the motor coach, we have nice uh, overhead um, capacity as well for your overhead uh, bags, coats, purses. Uh, very comfortable, lots of storage space. And we are fully equipped with the washroom as well. So if you uh, need to use the washroom, um, then uh, of course, while you're on the motor coach, uh, a mask is mandatory with the exception if you're having some food or beverage and then you're asked to put your mask back on. But that is the protocols uh, at the moment. And as things change with public health, we will uh, adjust uh, accordingly. So thank you and hopefully you'll uh, join us on the trip soon. We have lots of uh, great programs planned for the Maritimes, uh, Atlantic Canada, and many places else in the world once we can do that. And currently we're even offering day trips, local day trips that people can get out and explore and have some fun. So come have fun with us and uh, join Atlantic Tours on its next adventure.
Well, thank you, Richard. Thank you for taking us around the Atlantic provinces. Thank everyone for uh, taking the time to join us today. Please reach out to your CAA travel advisor or your nearest CAA office if you would like to have any more information on anything that Richard spoke about today. We would also like to thank Richard very much for the generous um, giveaways that he has given us. We will draw names at the end of all the presentations. And speaking of more presentations, um, this is just the first of many we have going on throughout today, Sunday, and also into Monday evening. So please go on to atlantic.caa.ca and you can see the whole lineup of shows there. There's going to be some really fun and exciting presentations. And again, thank everyone for um, you know joining us today, taking the time, and have a great day, have a great weekend. Well, well, Leslie and Barb, thank you very much. I very much enjoyed it. But as I said, it was going to be a speed dating adventure. So uh, <laughs> no shortage of uh, gift to gab on my part, but to cover four provinces that quickly is uh, why I referred to it as that. The other thing I wanted to mention is that most of our, every tour operated by Atlantic Tours, our own tours operated by us. We also have that reduced deposit um, on right now, uh, which is only $50 to put your name down. Because um, we're not traveling if it's not safe for us to travel. That's not going to happen. So basically, we do need a commitment. So that's why it's $50. If you change your mind, that $50 can be moved to another trip or can be refunded if we can't go. So basically, we're just encouraging people to not sit and wait. Um, the phones have actually started ringing since the bubble has been announced. And, uh, you know, every tour is going to have a different capacity based on the number of of people in a specific bubble. So if there's six or eight traveling together, then that opens up more seats. So we'll just keep that in mind up to a 75% capacity. Now let's uh, move over to any questions. I know Barb, I think, is monitoring that if there happens to be any there. And if not, uh, like I said, we really appreciate the partnership with CAA. We love uh, Atlantic Canada. Hopefully that showed uh, in the presentation today. Thank you, Richard. Uh, that was great. Actually, I've never been to Newfoundland, so you've given me some uh, great ideas of how to get to Newfoundland. Uh, we don't have any questions now, but of course, if anybody does have questions, they can certainly email us and we'd be more than happy to answer them. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Hope to see you on the next one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.